Hello, welcome everyone tonight. Um, let me just turn around. Hey, welcome to uh, tonight's live painting demo. I will just be starting shortly. Um, we have about four people here going and I hopefully we won't have any technical problems. I've been um, plagued with a few problems in the last few weeks. Hopefully I've sorted some of those out. I um, bought a new battery for my camera, for my phone, because it ran out of juice twice during the last demo. Really fun when that happens. All of a sudden you're doing, you're going live and the next moment your phone is dead. Um, so I um, will switch this around and I'm going to get to work. Great. And uh, please, um, and if you're, uh, if you knew, if you're new here, let me know. If um, in either way, please let me know where you're watching from. I have no idea um, who you are or where you are unless you um, get, leave a message in the comments. Okay. So, um, as always, I start off by doing a little bit of measuring of um, of this young man here. I'm going to line him up at the top. His head, just um, the way I have him lined up, I wanted, uh, th because this is a companion piece with the piece that I did last week, and the idea is that they are, they should look like they're making eye contact or at least looking in the same um, direction towards each other. So I have him fairly high up in, in the panel so that, um, so that their gazes meet. So a little bit of, um, taking two different uh, photos from taken at different times, but trying to tie them together so that they look like they were part of um, part of the same idea, essentially. So I'm just laying in, sort of getting a little bit of idea. Um, do you want to make, get a little bit of measurement as I go? Because I tend to be pretty far off in my, yep, I'm already pretty far off. So I am going to cheat here and throw a little bit of the blue that I know is going to go in the background and cover over those lines that I put. Okay. Um, okay, so we have uh, Siver Black is tuning in from Texas. Uh, um, that's great. And you saw me from Sketchy. Love Sketchy. And let's get a measurement of right from the tip of his brow to the top of the panel. So um, just a little bit um, so you know what I'm dealing with here tonight. Our, the furnace in our house um, went out about a week ago. And um, so we've been dealing with, uh, I think the lowest it's gotten in our house is about 38 degrees. Um, so far it was really uh, cold a few days ago. And so I'm painting, I'm sitting right next to the heater. You probably can hear the fan of the heater going and I have a, a few layers on. I had a down coat on um, just a bit ago, but it warmed up enough that I could take it off. And so um, just what well, interesting thing to note about that is that um, you know how they say you can put your oil paints in the freezer to keep them from drying out. Well, I um, have had no problems with my paints um, drying. Um, and so I've, I've been able to keep them wet on my palette for, um, for the whole week without them really drying out significantly, which is kind of interesting. And um, with that said, though, I have a few paintings that are commissions that I need them to dry, and they haven't been drying in the house. So I've had to move them to somewhere that there is heat so that they will dry off properly before I ship them. Okay, I'm putting a lot of landmarks in. I'm just going to go back and measure them to see, make sure they are where they need to be. Tip of the nose, that's fine. And then his lip is going to come out here. Separation of the mouth. So I can just put indicate his upper lip. Just not being um, ultra precise here right now. I'm just sort of trying to find where the landmarks are. And then I can come back later and really study the photo and make sure I'm getting all the shape relationships right. 
Again, I want to measure where his cheek is from the edge of the panel. So this um, this is a commission. I've um, trimmed the panels to uh, metric sizes so uh, the client is in France so that she can um, frame these up easily. Um, there's France, there's not a lot of um, inch size or imperial size um, frames to choose from. You'd, you'd also have to import those. So, um, so we worked out a, a size that's going to make it easier for her to, to frame these up. And these are, um, will be for Christmas. Okay, so, um, and so uh, Jellybean1520 um, asks, and, uh, watching from Pennsylvania, do you find it easier to paint male or female faces? Um, I, I think I can do either just as well, and I've had success doing either. I find that, especially if I'm working from a lot of selfies, that there's just so many um, more good um, photos of, of women to choose from. Um, just, I just think as a, our society, women are taking m many more pictures of themselves and for good or for bad, but it gives me a much larger pool of images to work from. So I would think if there were, if I had better photos of men, I would be doing a lot more paintings of men. Um, unfortunately, it's when I come across a really good photo of a guy, I'm just like, oh yeah, I'm going to paint that. Um, but it is a pretty rare that I see a painting of a man, a photo of a man that I'm just like, um, that the lighting is right, the quality of the photo and the, the facial features, everything just is right that I just um, want to paint that. And there's, uh, there's one that I painted a, a few weeks ago that as a, a man in profile, I'm trying to remember, I think his name is Stefan. And uh, I was actually thinking about painting that painting for a long time, but it does seem that my skill level just wasn't there yet to be able to do the painting. And when I felt like I was ready, then I did it and it came out really nicely. Okay, so starting to see, feel, my way around this the form a little bit just you know oils are so malleable that's one thing that's really great about them you can change them a thousand times and especially when you're doing a la prima wet into wet they're um, so forgiving so i i can make these indications really quickly and i can go back and change them paint over them i want to make sure that i get this maybe i'll try to mix a little bit of this color. It's, he it sort of has this warm color underneath his nose. So it's kind of light and I'm sort of lost that with all of the, the drawing. And I also want to make an indication of where the, the edge of the shadow is, because that's a really important part of, going to be an important part of this painting is the division between the light and shadow. So I'm just going to even though up in the forehead, it's not too clear where that is, but I can see it here. And even in the hair, even though it's all very dark, I can show you where, and there's lots of reflection here in the hair, but there is a light side and a shadow side. And in the shadow side, you do have reflected light into that too. So it does make it really hard to see that, but in the face, it is a, a lot clearer where the light and shadow is. Let me see if I can correct for, I have his ear a little bit too far um, to one side, so I am going to redraw that. Should be more over here. I can check the height. The tip of the ear is just right in line with this part of the brow. Okay, I'm gonna measure that again. Make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, pretty close. Okay, who's my favorite artist? I would say there's a toss-up between a few different artists. Um, and I'm not sure if you mean living or dead, but of dead artists, 
<laughs> that doesn't sound very gracious, of past artists, I would say between John Singer Sargent and uh, Joaquin Soroya, they're both uh, 19th century or considered 19th century realists. Um, Joaquin Soroya is more known for his color work and a lot of people think of him as impressionist, but his paintings are done in a different style than impressionism. So um, that might be a little bit of a misnomer. Okay, let me check the chin too. I can measure the chin from the bottom since it's a longer distance from the top. Where do I, the lowest point of the chin there. Okay, and the lowest point of the chin. So it's more here. I've gone a little bit too low. And then his shirt, I want to see quite a bit of blue in it, and I want to keep that blue. But So I'm going to have a mixture of blue and black to get that kind of navy blue. And then I can kind of correct the chin with that. Do more of the negative shape uh, beyond the chin. And then something like that. So let's get a measurement here, too. Okay, that's right. And from the bottom. Okay, I know this part's a little tedious because of all the measuring, but it does pay off in the end to, um, to verify everything's in the right place. And then same with the ear. I can use a little bit of black to clean up my drawing. And then there's the hairline here. Okay. All right. And then I want to indicate where the collar is. And again, I have that blue black mixture. And this sweeps down, comes down a little bit like that. Okay. So I gave him a little bit too much mouth. I think I could do the whole painting as just a correction of my initial drawing if I come in with a little bit of color for each thing. Um, that would be an interesting way to approach it. But um, just getting a little bit of greens and blues in there in this little bit of color because of his um, the the hair shadow on his face, sort of the masculine um, masculine features there, the little bit of stubble coming in, um, will tends to give it a little bit of a bluer greener coloration to that area. So why not push it a little bit? I can always bring these things closer together if I've if I've swung the colors too too wildly and made it too colorful. If you go too colorful sometimes then you sort of lose the the believability of the flesh tones. So you, sometimes you have to bring everything a lot closer together the those color differences before the flesh tones really start to read properly. My favorite is when you can keep a good amount of the color and still get the flesh tones to look believable. Um, sort of, for me, that's sort of the best of both worlds. I not really. I know it's a lot easier if you put in a lot of grays to get the flesh tones to to read properly. But I kind of feel like um, it takes a, a a little bit of bravery, I guess, to, to go so gray and hope that. The subtleties of the of the paintings uh, painting makes it interesting enough. I like to get a fair amount of color as a way of uh, making the painting a little bit more exciting. Okay, so um, Allison says, "Love your work. Do you always paint from photos? I've been scared to paint photos that I." want due to copyright concerns. Well, if you have an iPhone, you can use the app Sketchy, where people uh, post their selfies, pictures of their family, photos of friends, etc. And 
sometimes it's photos that professional photographers have taken but essentially when they're using the app when they upload photos they're granting the rights to use those photos often if it's obviously a professional photographer I will ask the name of the photographer and I will contact them um, outside the app to make sure that it's okay especially if I'm using it for something like a YouTube video that's so um, that gets a lot of play and will be up for a long time that I want to make sure that there, that it doesn't get take da taken down at some point for copyright violations so but otherwise if it's just a selfie and um, the person who who is in the selfie get, is giving you permission then um, then you don't have to worry about it I do I have started using more photos that are on Instagram that I see uh, someone that I like that I want to paint and I'll just ask them permission before I use their painting I, I've also been doing these um, let my followers choose I'll, I'll do a selection of four paintings and I'll make it a little bit of a contest to get um, get people engaged a little bit in the process and so uh, I, I tend not to tell people when I'm entering that their photo in because I don't want to um, get their hopes up if their photo isn't chosen but um, I've done a I've done a couple where um, every photo is in the selection is the same person so um, that sort of guarantees that they're going to be um, painted okay so I, I lost that line the separation of the shadow and the, and the light side of the face and I want to put that back in and I also want to make sure that I'm going dark enough in the shadow area so this is what's going to give it the sense of light and as a rule the the lightest part of the shadow side of the face is going to be darker than the darkest part of the lightest side of the face so just to, as, a, as a way of maintaining a certain amount of structure to your values in in the painting and to really help give it that sense of light and maintain a certain uh, believability in the painting you that's a, a good rule to follow occasionally there might be a case where you have a really strong uh, re secondary light and so that there'll be some areas possibly where you kind of maybe see a strong primary light and a strong secondary light and that generally leaves sort of this big stripe down the the middle of the face and but in that case the the dark side of the face will be lighter than some of the areas of the the darkest areas of the light side of the face or I should say it's possible okay so I am just doing a lot of very generalizing trying to get the um, overall shapes right and if you work in and I've I've broken one of my rules which is don't don't spend too much time with the too small a brush I have these this kind of thin round that's sort of a little bit whippy and gives me sort of these long fluid marks and as long as I keep them fluid then then I won't be hurt too badly from it but occasionally it'll make the painting look a little stiff if you use a small brush for too long a period of time so um, let me see let me follow the discussion here um, do you paint portraits or um, would you expand to more things so for years I've painted all kinds of subject matter and uh, for a while I was doing almost all landscape painting and but I always had in the back of the mind that I was really a portrait painter or I all my sketchbooks whenever I was in meetings or taking notes there would just be hundreds of doodles of people's faces that's that's really where my brain went and kind of felt like I had a facility for it but with that um, there also is this issue that you know if you're gonna paint for models it gets very expensive if I'm doing my painting after work late at night to ask people to come over to your house while everyone's sleeping to pose nude or have semi nude on your couch is a little bit awkward and and 
if you're really going to get good, you're going to have to do hundreds of paintings a year to really build up your skills. And so that I kind of had it in the back of my mind, you know, too, is like if you're doing paintings of people that are fairly realistic as opposed to something somewhat stylized, then who's going to buy a painting of somebody else? And, and there's some people that might buy the painting just because they like the artistry of the work. I found it overall to be very difficult unless your work is so super stylized and you've developed this um, really big name for yourself people generally aren't gonna um, be um, feel an attachment to a painting of somebody that they don't know and so for all these reasons I've sort of avoided just diving into figurative work I've done you know I figured still lives or or landscape paintings are much more accessible for people, especially if it's a place they've been to or they know um, in the vicinity of where they live or just a still life maybe, oh, if that's you know real pretty, we can have that in our, in our breakfast nook or something like that. Then, then people sort of develop reasons why you know, they would want a painting or another that's what I mean by accessible. They can, almost anyone could, can relate to the work. They're just looking at it for the, the painting quality. But then when you get into figurative work, then you sort of lose that accessibility. And so, and, and I also, I think over the years too, I've also dabbled a little bit in portrait painting and I've found it to be very difficult. I got very frustrated. I would work hours at night in my basement and not, um, that really wasn't the best studio set up for me. And I would have, um, do painting after painting that was just horrible. <laughs> and, and so I kind of avoided it for a while to say, to say the least. Um, but I got to some point where I was like, you know, I, I and I work full time as a as a web developer, and I kind of was getting a little mad at myself. Like I have this skill as a painter that I'm not really developing, and I'm into my fifties now, and I kind of felt like I really haven't given it a true effort. Not like the effort that I made in art school, where I was doing all-nighters all the time, I was um, attending workshops, I was doing everything I could to learn as much as I could. And I kind of felt like with uh, painting gestural heads or portraits, I really was, in a way, selling myself short. So that's when I decided, you know what, if I'm going to do this, I need to make it a regular practice that I need to paint enough that I get through some of the technical issues that have been stopping me. If I keep on working at it and identify those things that I need to figure out, then then one by one I can kind of get through it and improve my skills. And over time I will notice an improvement. I just can't expect it to come out. Um, just all of a sudden go down in the basement or set up a studio now is in my mudroom that I would expect uh, the instant results. Uh, that's just not how it works. You have to put in the time, the dedication to do it, to really, um, you know, sacrifice things, things that you would do instead, binge watching uh, Game of Thrones or whatever it is. Although I do that while I'm painting. I just have the have it on on the side and um, listen. I'm more listening to the Game of Thrones and actually watching it. Um, but in a, in a way, I kind of need something going in the background to keep my um, keep my ADHD from acting up. So, um, so what I was saying was that uh, about three years ago, I decided that I was not going to make any more excuses. That I was going to spend my free time after work, after family, that this was going to be the, my pursuit. And I was going to dig in and work as hard as I could to develop the skills so that, um, so that I wouldn't have any regrets about 
um, having never tried. And so I can kind of say, honestly, after a few years, and I've been posting on Instagram and doing the YouTube videos, that um, that I can see uh, a vast improvement in my skills. And I know exactly, I understand exactly those things that were technical issues that were holding me back. And I know, I understand now the, the mistakes that I was making. And with each painting, I mean, even now I have, um, there's technical issues that I try to resolve as I go, but now it's just more about understanding, trying to get to what does an A.J. Alper painting look like? What is my, what is my approach? What is my style? And sort of getting into a regular practice so I, I can get consistent results each time. And and interesting, I'm sort of at a point now, there's lots of times in a painting I'll get a little bit timid um, with the paint. And I, I'm i afraid that I'm either going to mess it up, I just don't take the kind of uh, chances that I should sometimes with a painting, especially if I've invested quite a bit of time in it already. Um, that's why sometimes I try to paint really fast that um, not fast brushstroke wise, but fast meaning very focused on trying to finish it, um, a painting in a short amount of time. Um, because then I feel like it's fresh. I don't feel like I've, um, if I mess it up, that I'll have lost anything. And, but what I'm finding is that as my skills improve, I'm, um, I'm, uh, I'm able to take, do the kind of things that um, I wish that I could have done earlier. I just have the kind of confidence that I know if I, if I take a certain type of brush stroke in a certain area, that I'm able to get the kind of mark that I want in the right place and the right value, and it's, um, and it, and it's not as difficult as I thought, just because I've uh, built up my skills to that degree. So. Um, let me see, I've lost, uh, let me see if I can figure out where we were. So, um, easier to paint male faces. Who's your favorite artist? I answered that. Do you like Bob Ross? I, I'm interestingly enough, I don't really like his paintings, but I like his approach. I like the idea that, um, that anybody can do it, that it's, um, that it's your painting, it's your art, no one can tell you. Um, otherwise, um, he sort of professed that it's um, it's between you and your painting, and whatever you want to do is fair game, and I and I like that idea. Um, I kind of find it funny when people um, comment on my Instagram that I shouldn't paint from photos and you shouldn't use black and all these different things, and um, and, and I find it kind of funny. It's like you know I, I'll do what I want. It's my painting and it's my mudroom, you know. <laughs> It's like just because I'm posting it publicly doesn't mean that I, I um, can't do, I can't follow my own rules, and so um, yeah. So I've had some of those kind of comments recently. Sorry, I'm just banging the mic. Sorry if your eardrums are going. Um, hopefully, I haven't froze up here. Up, oh, picture froze. Uh, I hate it when that happens. Okay, I'm wondering if you can still hear me though. Sometimes this takes a restarting my Wi-Fi. Let me see if I can do this. And uh, uh, okay, let's see if I can get this going. Uh, I'll put it on YouTube. 